Good day to all. Welcome to Extreme Recap. Today, I'm going to tell a captivating story about Mary, a talented young girl whose extraordinary abilities put her at the center of a fierce family conflict. So unwind, subscribe to the channel, and enable subtitles while you relax. Frank Adler gets his niece Mary ready for school at the beginning of the movie. He talks about a special breakfast, but Mary justifies herself by saying that her cat only has one eye. Mary is reassured by Fred Frank that he will be fine at the bus stop. Frank bids Mary Frank's neighbor farewell. Mary's attendance at school concerns Roberta, who visits his house. Roberto's remarks cause Frank anxiety. Mary appears to dislike being at school later on. The class is given straightforward math problems by Bonnie. Mary appears contemptuous because the questions are too simple. Then Bonnie asks who more difficult, particularly multiplication-related, questions that become more difficult to answer. Mary gives a correct response after a brief hesitation. The educator. A calculator, and Mary is proven correct. She is taken aback when she realizes Mary is not your typical child. The students in the first grade learn about the principal, Davis. The class approaches her with deference, however Mary acts nonchalantly and yells at Davis and Bonnie requesting to summon forthright and take her. Frank shows up later to pick it up. Bonnie and Mary try to talk to him. She tries to convince him that Mary is unique. Frank explains that Mary uses a technique to answer Bonnie's math questions in class. Bonnie investigates the Jacko technique and is impressed. Mary inquires about taking a test while Frank is working on a boat. Frank mentions that Mary's mother would want her to make friends during their conversation at the beach. Mary shows Fred to her classmates when she brings him to school. She tells them that she found him in the trash and saved him, revealing that he only has one eye. Mary receives additional tasks when Bonnie approaches her. They bond well in class because they recognize her ability. Additionally, Bonnie conducts additional Adler research. She learns that Diane Adler, Frank's sister, excelled in math. Diane ended her own life at 27 years old and left Mary with plain. Frank tells Bonnie about Diane's sudden arrival and the tragedy that followed at a local bar. He is sorry for what happened. Frank responds when Bonnie inquires about other members of the family by revealing that Mary's biological father left her. Her mother was a British woman who was strict and demanding. Mary is riding the bus to school when she notices her classmate entering with an impressive project. She initially experiences anxiety and believes that her own project is not good enough. The boy, who trips and breaks his work, is intimidated by the bully on the bus. Mary intervenes, telling the other kids to stop and punching the bully in the face. The other kids laugh and make fun of the bully. With a book Frank later visits Mary's school, where he meets the bleeding bully. He conducts a quick check. If Mary is fine. Principal Davis emphasizes that it is against the law to hit people. Frank agrees to explain that to Mary. Davis suggests that, despite the fact that he is proud of her for standing up to the bully. Mary research Frank raises financial concerns at Oaks Academy for gifted education, where she could receive an education tailored to her abilities. However, Davis provides Mary with a full scholarship. Frank, on the other hand, turns down the offer, arguing that Mary ought to be treated like a normal child and attend a normal school. He responds that he is unsure when Bonnie inquires about his decision. Mary apologizes to her cohorts for her way of behaving, and everybody extols Justin, the kid whose zoo project was viewed as the best. Evelyn, Frank and Mary's grandmother, is waiting for them at the door when they get home. Evelyn brings a sophisticated notebook and a Charles Zimmer book on advanced algebra. Mary informs her that she has already read the book and is currently studying differential equations without any interest. She expresses gratitude to Frank for the present. Evelyn yells at Frank for complaining about the conditions in which he lives. When they meet for lunch, she says that she cares about Mary and wants Mary to live in a better place. Frank is admonished by her about the involvement of the authorities. Frank explains. Diane describes them as weak and would not want Evelyn to have custody of Mary. Evelyn makes the sudden comment that the case will go to court. Mary inquires about God and faith as Frank and Mary depart together. He informs her that his own opinion may be incorrect. As a result, he does not have the authority to change her mind. Roberta is mentioned by Mary, and he says that Roberta loves her very much and has faith. 
He informs her that he is confident that they will all become together. And what matters is that, in the end, Roberta demonstrates her love for them by appearing in court to assist Frank in obtaining Mary's custody against her mother. Evelyn's intention to take Mary to Massachusetts becomes abundantly clear. However, Frank desires her to remain with him. Frank later asks Roberta to look after Mary. Roberta has agreed overnight. Despite the fact that she is only a neighbor and not a relative, she sincerely loves Mary. Mary sings and has a great time at Roberta's house all night. Frank and Bonnie meet at the bar, and Bonnie tells Frank that she wasn't the one who gave Davis the information. Over a few drinks, they form a bond and have interesting conversations about Bonnie. Despite her inability to become emotionally involved with him, they end up spending the night together. Mary is at Frank's house looking for a DVD. Frank discovers this and becomes frustrated, declaring that he cannot have his own life for a while. She also becomes frightened when she discovers Bonnie leaving Frank's room. Mary becomes enraged and departs. Later, he makes amends with Mary and checks his mail while they reconcile. Roberta slams him for his irresponsible behavior outside, and he learns that Mary will be spending two days with her grandmother in Boston. During the trip, Mary sees family photos, her grandmother and mother included. At the point when they were youthful back in Florida, Frank and Bonnie grow even closer. Mary is taken to college by Evelyn, where they discuss the seven millennium prize issues. Gregory Perillo, who worked on the Pokhara conjecture, is depicted in a photograph. Evelyn recalls how, if Diane had solved the Navier-Stokes equation, she might have been recognized and had her picture hung on the wall as well. Mary says that she wants to go beyond that wall one day. As a result, Professor Shanklin assigns her a challenging equation to solve. After a while, Frank, I'm not able to solve it, remarks to Evelyn that Mary might not be as capable. Evelyn, enraged, regrets going to Shanklin and walks with Mary. When Mary declares that the equation is incorrect and cannot be solved, they return to Shanklin, where Mary corrects the equation and completes its solution. Upon returning home, feeling overwhelmed after leaving Shanklin, Evelyn is nice, Mary tells Frank, but she doesn't want to live with her. She has Frank's word that she will not leave. Pat meets Mary, a social worker who inquired about her life in multiple ways. Mary says that she and Frank watched the last fight and that he promised to keep her close and is a good person. Pat inquires as to her reasoning. Additionally, Mary responds that Frank had always desired her. Mary's biological father is taken to court despite her abilities. What's more, he maintains that Evelyn should have guardianship of Mary. Frank's lawyer makes Mary's father realize that he has never seen his daughter in person and is embarrassed by his lack of knowledge of her middle name. In court, Frank prevails this round. He leads her to the vehicle. She claims that she dislikes fighting with her own father, but Frank claims that they have never been in agreement. Mary locks the door and cries so hard because her father is in town and hasn't seen her yet. Frank drives Mary and Roberta later to the hospital. They wait together for a boy's birth. Frank also informs Mary that she was also born in the same manner and that everyone was thrilled for her. He informs her that he informed everyone of her birth. Mary joins the families at the hospital to celebrate with joy. Frank's attorney notices Evelyn's baseball reference later, during her testimony in court. They argue vehemently about the fact that Diane was never permitted to pursue anything other than mathematics. She never led a normal life or participated in sports. Paul Diane's first love is mentioned by Frank's lawyer. Paul and Diane fled to a Vermont ski resort when they were 17 years old. He makes Evelyn feel bad about suing him and puts her under pressure by claiming she was kidnapped, which upset Diane. Evelyn insists that this was not the situation that led to her 1999 attempt at suicide. Moreover, that she attempted to be a good mother. He testifies to Diane Frank and claims to be a freelance boat repairman. Mary's health is mentioned as a concern by Evelyn's attorney. Both life and education Frank maintains that he desires for her to develop into a normal child. Mary could also be temporarily placed with an adoptive family overnight, according to the lawyer. This way, when she turns 12 years old, she can decide in court where she wants to live. Frank can easily visit the adoptive family because they live in Tampa, which is only 30 minutes away. Additionally, Evelyn has visitation rights and feels powerless. He decides to relocate Mary to Tampa.
Mary becomes extremely depressed, so she cries and begs Frank not to leave her alone, reminding him of his promise to never leave her. Roberta and Franklin later intended Mary's absence. Bonnie learns from Frank that he had considered several times turning Mary over to child services, but he was unable to let her go. In light of the situation, he feels guilty. He tries to visit Mary, but the adoptive father tells him not to. Dislikes seeing him. Roberta helps Frank through his grief. Bonnie notification a banner for pets up for reception. She sends Fred's picture to Frank, who rushes to the location and manages to rescue Fred and two other cats. Fred was initially offered for adoption by Evelyn. Frank and Roberta rush to Mary to see her and are successful in rescuing her. Frank tells Evelyn that Diane wanted the Navier-Stokes equation to be published after her mother's death when he shows her documents proving Diane actually solved it. This means that Diane's wishes were ignored by Evelyn. Frank and Mary reconcile and are delighted to be back together. Leaving Roberta behind, Evelyn begins to weep as she examines the scribbled, tear-stained notes and sketches. She then contacts MIT. In contacts, Shanklin Mary attends the university and is picked up shortly thereafter by Frank. He hands her a book about existence written by Rene Descartes as they talk in the car. Frank drops her off at the park, where she happily plays with other girls after she jokes with him about it. With, the movie ends. Frank, admiring Bonnie from a distance. Turn on notifications, please subscribe for more videos like this, and like the channel to support it. Thank you very much for watching.